The automotive world is filled with various kinds of debates, right? Lambos versus Ferraris, coupes versus convertibles, manuals versus automatics. A big one in recent years has been gas powered versus electric. But I think a lot of people tend to forget that you can actually have both. But you know what else you can do? Put pineapples on pizza. But is that something you'd want to do? Well, here is the Volvo S60 Recharge Black Edition, and it's a plug-in hybrid with more power than a base Porsche Taycan, and has more electric range than a Panamera e-hybrid, while still being substantially cheaper than both. But is it something you'd want to buy? Let's find out. So Volvo is in this kind of weird position where their cars don't necessarily have the same brand prestige as other brands like Audi and Mercedes, but their cars aren't too far off in terms of the price. So I think the overall pitch here is that you can spend slightly less than what you would for one of those cars and get something that's pretty great in terms of having solid performance and great daily ability. This is the S60 Recharge with the ultimate package. So you're getting a heads up display, Bowers and Wilkins sound system, a 360 camera, and a handful of other goodies for about 64 grand as optioned, which isn't insane, but is it worth it? I think the best way to describe this design is big Polestar vibes. And yes, Volvo came before Polestar, so technically Polestars have big Volvo vibes, but point is, this car reminds me a lot of the Polestar 2. And so if you want that kind of vibe as far as the way your car looks without committing to a full-on EV, this is a pretty nice option. You've got a very sleek and sharp yet simple design as far as the exterior, which I'm a fan of. You've got a normal size grills and pretty muscular body lines without really overdoing anything. I'm a fan of these T-shaped headlights and especially the rear taillights. I think they've got a pretty unique look and I can always tell it's a Volvo when I see one of these from behind. And with this being the black edition, we've got blacked out grills and custom gloss black 19 inch wheels. The only thing is that this black edition package is an extra two grand. And besides getting the different wheels, I'm not really sure if that's super reasonable, but I definitely like the way this looks and I definitely prefer the black edition to the standard theme. It's handsome. The interior here is pretty standard Volvo. Uh, it pretty much looks identical to all other Volvos in the lineup except for their EVs. And Volvo interiors to me have always been kind of middle of the road. It's not super exciting to sit in or experience, but it's definitely nice in terms of overall build quality and comfort. And that's an M5. Love that sound. You can only get the S60 with a charcoal black interior, which kind of sucks because there is an amber brown interior that they do on their SUVs, which I think would have looked really nice here. But overall, it's fine. I can live with it. Uh, one touch I do like in the interior is this crystal-esque uh, shift knob or slash gear selector you have in the center console area. I know it's not actually crystal, but I'm sure they probably want you to think it is. With all modern cars going into this all screen experience, I can appreciate that there is a nice blend of digital and physical controls and typically I'm not the biggest fan of digital climate controls but I feel like their way of implementing it here in the Volvo interior is pretty functional and I'd, I'd say it's pretty livable. Overall I'd describe this interior as solid. There isn't anything here functionally or aesthetically that's blowing me away necessarily. It isn't as exciting as like certain Mercedes interiors. It isn't necessarily as premium as certain BMW and Audi interiors but there really isn't anything to complain about here and sometimes I feel like that's all you really need. The $3,200 Bowers & Wilkins sound system is pretty pricey as a standalone option as typically with higher end cars, a higher end audio system will be bundled in with some other features. But I must admit, this audio system slaps and it's definitely one of the most impressive aspects of the interior experience overall for me. This is a 1400 watt 15 speaker system and there's a bunch of cool features in the infotainment to tweak the sound experience to tailor it for just the driver or just the rear passengers or or the entire car as a whole. It's pretty cool that you're able to do that. Overall fidelity is really good. You've got really solid and punchy mids and highs with excellent bass response. And obviously the system can get very, very loud. The only real negative, which is almost a nitpick, is that the subwoofer is so powerful that when playing music at higher volumes, the side mirrors can shake pretty badly, which will distort your view when you're looking at them. But other than that, I honestly think this system is worth it. Now, personally, it'd be hard for me to spec this car for myself and take that $3,200 option, but if I were buying a used pre-built S60, I would try my absolute hardest to find one that has this Bowers & Wilkins system already optioned. 
One of the selling points of this car is that you've got Google services built in, which means you don't need a phone to utilize Google Maps, Google Assistant, and the Google Play Store. But this is only enabled through a digital services subscription that is included with the car for four years from the delivery date. After that, I'm assuming things will change. Regardless though, this is a pretty cool perk and something that makes the S60 stand out from its rivals. Because a lot of built-in car software is honestly trash, so being able to get access to good software without using your smartphone is a pretty nice touch. You know what isn't a nice touch though? No wireless CarPlay. The car has Apple CarPlay, but only through a wired connection, which is so freaking frustrating. Audi, Mercedes, BMW, and Porsche all have wireless functionality. Heck, even a lot of cheaper Toyotas have wireless CarPlay, so I just can't understand how a brand new car that costs 64 grand is lacking this functionality. I guess one nice touch is that they have a slot in the center console area that's meant to seat a smartphone with a cable attached because they know you're gonna be using a cable with it in the car, but this is a big negative if you ask me, and I really, really hope Volvo can change this with future models. The S60 Recharge gets about 41 miles of pure electric range, so living here in Jersey, I could theoretically do a round trip drive to Manhattan purely on electric range, and I'd probably be empty by the time I get back, but regardless, I could do it. The electric motor is only providing 143 horsepower, so it's not exactly thrilling to drive in pure EV mode, but it's definitely zippy enough to drive around on 25 mile an hour limit streets. But to me, it's really about the experience you get when combining the electric motor with the four cylinder engine. If you aren't street racing anybody, you can get about a 70 mile per gallon equivalent in hybrid mode, which is pretty darn good, especially if you want something with good performance that you don't have to worry about charging all the time. I just had the Mercedes EQE a few weeks ago, and that was a pretty quick EV with a decent amount of power, but I had to visit a charging station about four times within my week of using that car, and my longest drive with that car was like 20 miles. So this is definitely something you can get solid performance out of and great fuel economy. I've been driving this car for five days straight, and I actually have yet to kill the gas tank on this car. I have depleted the electric range, so I'm at zero miles of electric range right now, but I've got about 70 miles of estimated range left, and I feel like that's pretty good not having to fill up your car every three days like you would some other performance cars. Obviously, this car is meant to be efficient, and if I was driving like a complete grandma, I'd probably be sitting at a half tank right now, but I'm sitting at a quarter, which I feel like is still very solid for I've been driving this thing for five days straight and doing 20 or 30 mile drives. With the gas and electric motor combined, this car makes about 455 horsepower and 523 pound feet of torque. And those are pretty darn good numbers compared to what you'd be getting for a BMW 3 Series hybrid or an Audi hybrid. And so this car can hit zero to 60 miles an hour in just 4.1 seconds, which I feel like is pretty impressive for a hybrid under hundred grand. There aren't a lot of hybrids at this price point that are this quick. And in the real world, this car is definitely quick. This is certainly one of the few hybrids in the five figure price range where you can really feel that instantaneous uh, acceleration when getting on the throttle. Off the line, it feels just as quick as a full on EV, but I think something to note is that it just isn't that fun to drive. Firstly, you have zero manual gearing options, not on the gear selector knob, and you have zero paddle shifters. So there's literally no way to manually control the way this car delivers power. And the steering also feels pretty disconnected and lacks a lot of road feel, if you ask me. And when in hybrid mode, this car is all wheel drive, but when in full EV mode, this car is rear wheel drive. But even still, there's no sporty prowess to the way this car drives. Overall, I'd say it's very competent, but not really fun when you really want to get on it or go around a tight bend or a corner or a roundabout. It just doesn't really inspire you to have fun all that much, but very competent and capable, just not a sports car. And I think most people buying a machine like this are not going to be expecting to have a BMW 3 Series type of experience, but I am just slightly disappointed and how little fun there is to be had with this car, despite how quick it is. Something that I feel like is interesting is that you have three different stages of power delivery. You firstly have the instantaneous torque from the electric motor when getting off the line, and then you have the engine kicking in, and then you can feel the turbos kicking in when you get on it even more. So it's a very interesting power experience where you feel like there's three stages of acceleration. And unlike other EVs, this car pretty much makes no EV sounds. It's pretty much dead silent in pure EV mode. There's no customizable noises like you've got in the Mercedes EQ cars or the BMW 
VW electric cars, which is kind of boring. Also, the two liter four cylinder engine really doesn't make that many noises as far as just grunts. It has no real tone or, or uniqueness to it. So overall, there really isn't much to get out of this car in terms of noises or sounds the car makes while you drive, which definitely contributes to the not fun to drive aspect. This car is certainly comfortable to drive and the suspension makes bumps and uneven roads pretty nice to drive on. Overall, it's a really nice place to sit and chill on a daily, weekly commute. But I think if you're looking for a luxury car with a sporty edge, I think you should probably look elsewhere because the S60 doesn't really have that. Now, granted, that's not exactly what Volvo is pitching here in terms of the experience, but I think some people might look for a car like this and hope to have some fun with it, especially when paying this amount of money. And unfortunately, that's not really what you're gonna get in my opinion. The S60 Recharge is like that friend you might have who's smart, dependable, reliable, has their life together really well, but you guys rarely hang out simply because you never really have anything fun to do together or get excited about together. The car looks good, it drives comfortably, and it has all the necessary tech features you'd want for a modern car, but outside of a really good sound system, there really isn't anything about this car that I'd rave about if I were bringing it up to someone else. It's just fine. But for a hybrid under 70 grand that has great straight line performance and solid electric range, I think this is one of the best bang for the buck options for a hybrid. If that's what you're looking for and if that's your main priorities, the S60 fits the bill in my book. But let me know in the comments down below, would you take this over a hybrid 3 Series or a hybrid Audi A7 or something like that? Leave a comment down below and let me know and that's going to be about it for this one. Thank you all for watching. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you enjoyed. Talk to you guys in the next one. I've been living with this vehicle for about a week now, and so far, I don't know. I'm kind of in the middle on this 